goes, who goes there? Ugh. What sort of hideous weasel are you? Uh, I just need to get past you for a second. Yeah, sure. What's the problem? No problem. Just pay 500 leaf bucks. Now. That's what it costs if you want to cross the cold water brook bridge. That's how much the troll costs. You mean toll? No, I mean troll. Leave the talking to those of us who don't make mistakes. But if we did that, the whole world might go silent. Everybody but me, that's right. Huh? And maybe my babysitter, Anya, she says I'm an extremely gifted child. I can stand her, more or less. Well, almost. But how can we possibly negotiate if I'm not supposed to talk? Fine, fine. 300 leaf bucks. 300 leaf bucks? Oh, right. You must be a government official if you wield this kind of authority. Is there a magician's apprentice discount by any chance? Normally, magicians' apprentices get financial aid. I have to cross the bridge for uh, educational purposes. Educational purposes? Discount? Be glad you have the opportunity to get through here at all. 300 leaf bucks, that's the fee. Pay up or stay on your side of the bridge. It's no loss to us. Hmm, I'll be back later then. What a little cutthroat! I can't get into a fight with a little kid. I'm just too good-natured. I have to find a way to get over the bridge without dangling him over the side by one leg to teach him a lesson. Whoa. Nah. Okay, I'll tell you what. You give me the lollipop and I'll let you go through. Just this once. Mm. Deliciously unhealthy. Actually, I think the honey made it even healthier. Can't be. Healthy things don't taste good. Since when are weird weasels like you are health experts anyway? Seems like animals can do anything here. I wouldn't be at all surprised by a weasel that's a health expert. Someone is being attacked by a crow. Hey, it's Ursula. <coughs> Stay put. The crow can't get to you there. There must be something I can do, but I'm just not close enough. There must have been more mail to deliver here before the flood. What a pretty flower. I think I've seen it on the label of one of Mum's relaxation keys. I'll grab a bud to take along. Here's a handwritten note. Beware, this is crow territory. For as long as it's unsafe by the river, I will be broadcasting from the swamp. Mousewood Radio, the voice of Mousewood won't give up. Signed, Ludwig Borrower. P.S. All right, I do give up. Now the swamp path is flooded as well. I'm going to be off the air until it's cleared. The building is a shambles. I can't shake the feeling that the crows around here are pretty unpleasant company. Ah! <laughs> 
the shoelace still looks quite usable. I'll take it with me. Egg a treat. Only two leaf bucks. Take a jug for some good luck. A quality product from the friendly wood dwarves. There's an asterisk next to the word friendly and some small print at the bottom. The purchase or consumption of this wood dwarf product in no way obliges the wood dwarves to treat their customers in a friendly manner. There's only one keg of blue juice left. Looks like Mousewood is running out of blue juice. Empty. Maybe I can flick the antenna to chase off the crow, but I can't reach the antenna. Maybe I can use this to flick the antenna and give the crow a good whack. Gotcha! Drat, it won't budge. Oopsie. Oh well, who needs that antenna anyway? Hmm, now I can throw the rope, just like a grappling hook. Leave the little owl alone or I'll let you have it. Well, if the pigeons in the park go for this kind of thing. At least Anya's cupcakes seem to appeal to birds. There, now you're in for it. No reason to thank me. I, Magician's Apprentice, Jerry Hazelnut, gladly help wherever I can. I saw everything. You're a hero. Not really. You're just like my friend Uli. Unfortunately, he's... Oh, well. Here, take this. What is it? A flyer. A mouse has to make a living, you know. Wow! He said I'm a hero! I'd better take you home now, Ursula. You can ride in my backpack. She was still clutching a crow feather. Did Ursula pluck that from the crow? Okay, I really shouldn't do this. If only Mr. Churchmouse hadn't tied that thread to my coin. The temptation is just too great. It worked! Like with the gumball machine next to my school. Uh, not that I would know. I've just heard things. The last keg of blue juice and a little sticker. Jerry, the promising young tree walker that everyone's going on about. You wouldn't happen to have a fire spell handy, would you? That's me, but I'm still in training, you know. Gossip spreads fast here. I hope you realise that I was only joking about the fire spell. 
After all, my bike is built from a matchbox. It would burn like kindling. Are you Plato the mailman? Well, if these packages don't get delivered today, they'll just be plain old Plato the frog. Oh. Your bicycle is really stuck in the ice, huh? Well, I expect the ice will have melted by tomorrow, but that won't do me any good. If I don't deliver the packages today, I'll soon be out of a job. Hmm. Maybe I can help you. Good luck, Plato. See you later. Thanks. Oh, what a nuisance. And I was going to go out with Anya tonight. Are these your packages and letters? No, but I am responsible for them. But now my bike's got stuck here and there's nothing I can do about it. That means I can't deliver the mail. I've never been this late on my round. Would you like me to distribute the mail for you? Hmm. Her? You'd really do that for me? Sure. I'll be running to and fro all day anyway. Oh, that would be a tremendous help. Then I can garden a bike. You know, my delicate frog's legs are better suited for cycling than for marching through the woods. No problem. Consider the mail delivered. To Mr. Church Mouse Senior. Hmm. I wonder what's in it. This package is addressed to Miss Edith Squirrel. The return address is Super Squirrel Boutique. The letter looks strange. It's addressed to Senor Molina. It's from M. Calavera, travel agent. To the charming voice of Radio 103.5. It looks like those stone eyes have seen a lot. A fish scale. It's all dry and shimmers in lots of colours. Hey, it's really light. It's under the tree. Any bird who built a nest up on a branch would have a magnificent view. I wonder if mice and squirrels live like this in our woods. Did I always just take a wrong turn in the woods at home? That's a funny name. Oh, really? So what's your name? Me? I'm Jerry. Oh, I think Jerry is a very funny name. And I bet you don't make drop-dead stylish accessories. Um, no. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. You see, I'll just keep waiting for Plato and my package then. Oh, maybe I should have left town with my cousin Edgar instead of standing here and thinking about how the crows could come back at any time. It just... Creepy, but I've just got to have my package. My package at last. Isn't it a super smart and drop dead stylish purse? Everyone will want to invite me to the theatre now. Thank you. Here, a tip for you. You can buy yourself something stylish too, though you do already have a stylish hat. <laughs> Hello. Good day, my friend. Wait a second. 
I know that voice. Ludwig Borrower is the name. Swamp Radio 103.6 R5. Mole in the morning, mole at noon, and mole in the evening. Right. I heard you on the radio once. Yes. Unfortunately, the swamp part is still covered, so I'm in contact. I would love to broadcast it. I've been broadcasting from the swamp ever since the crows pulled apart my old transmitter. So you're a radio DJ? Yes. Unfortunately, the swamp path is still flooded, so I can't continue. I would love to broadcast it. I've been broadcasting from the swamp ever since the crows pulled apart my old transmitter. Swamp Radio 103.6 R5. Mole in the morning, mole at noon, and mole in the evening. Is there any hope that you'll be transmitting again soon? With all the moisture that creeps into my transmitter in the swamp? Never! Someone might complain about my watered-down contributions. What? But your fans... They'll say my jokes are all wet. How will you explain to your fans that you're quitting? With damp eyes. <laughs> because everything's flooded, right? No, because it's really sad. No, you can't just give up like that. I'm not giving up. Crack a nut, squirrel, as the young people say these days. No, to get me to stop broadcasting, they'll have to tie my arms, legs, mouth, and belly button. I've always wanted to be on the radio, too. That's the right attitude. If you want to host with me, you'll have to be sharp. Sharp? Yes. Just try to set him up so I can knock him down. <laughs> with rapier-like wit. Um, yes? I, uh, what should I say? Oh, something funny. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, why did the chicken cross the road? Ooh, that's not good. That'll go down very badly here in Mousewood, believe me. Oh, okay. Try to come up with something more appropriate for our audience. I'll try again. I have to be going. See you soon. And remember, Swamp Radio 103.6 R5. Mole in the morning, mole at noon, and mole in the evening. To the charming voice of Radio 103.5. Special delivery for Mr. Burrower. Ah, my first fan letter. Dear Mr. Burrower, I am a long-time listener of your program. Intellectual commentary. Cheesecake. <coughs> yes! Fan letter? What a fan. Well, thanks for your delivery. Please take a small promotional gift. Take this wonderful money and say with pride I listen to Swamp Radio 103.6 uh, five. Mole in the morning, mole at noon and mole in the evening Uh, thanks One leaf bark, but I only have one. One single leaf bark. Well. Virtuoso Maxim Malsikov currently resides in Mousewood and is prepared to teach one, but only one, highly gifted apprentice the art of playing the violin. Interested parties, please apply. <laughs> Too bad I'm not very musical. A piece of... A piece of... Just a sec! Welcome. 
him back. Oh, what a wonderful idea. Yes, it's perfect for little Humber. Then he can play violin together with Plato. I'll tell him about it soon. I'm already here, honey dripper. Ursula, looks like you messed it all up. Oh, it's impossible to stay mad at her for long. in here. The pots must contain dried herbs and spices. It says, coffee, free. But please, please also try our pound cake. I'm done with this for now. See you later. Take care. See you soon. I found your niece. Little Ursula? Ooh. Ooh. A crow attacked her. Oh, ooh, oh. how is she? Tell me. Oh, ooh, oh. She's fine. I chased off the crow. The feather shows me that you speak the truth. I thank you, Jerry. You are a true tree walker. That is what we call animals who help others in need. Oh. Good work, Jerry. I'm proud of you. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Hello, Mr. Church Mouse. Oh, it's you. The boy with the hat and the tight purse strings. What do you need, boy? The Church Mouse and Son have everything. I'm afraid I don't... The hiding stuff and... Now you... No, I promised Plato I would deliver the mail fast and reliable. You've got mail. Thank you. No problem. Huh? Who said that? But as long as the catfish is swimming outside the barrier, we can't even think about setting off. But once I've done that, we get started, right? Yes, and then our great journey will begin. Hmm. Or so we hope. Hmm. 
good idea. That's exactly what we need. An excellent rudder. But as long as the catfish is swimming outside the barrier, we can't even think about setting off. But once I've done that, we get started, right? Yes, and then our great journey will begin. Mm, or so we hope. And good night. What did you just put in the water? Uh, me? Oh, uh, nothing. Something that makes little mice sleepy couldn't harm a gigantic catfish. Well, at least I hope. Oh, ho, ho. outstanding, first mate. Please open the barrier by pressing the lever over there. Here. It looks like you can open the barrier from here. Either that, or fire off a couple of rockets. Let's give it a try. Oh, oh, well done. I shall defer to you on the maiden voyage of our good ship, Goldleaf. Arr, cast off, starboard port, make him walk the plank. On second thoughts, I should probably take command. You can still be my first mate, though. Man, I need a parrot on my shoulder who just agrees with everything I say. Then I would be captain. Halt! Who sails down the brook? Him again. Waterway troll, 400 leaf bucks. Oh, you mean troll? <laughs> How troll? Yeah, yeah, smart and troll and gifted. My babysitter Anya always says that. Dead end, unless you pay 400 leaf bucks. Nobody sails under my bridge without paying. Oh, <laughs> river pirates. Oh, kids will be kids. You know, we used to cook up schemes like this, but as an adult, you have to let things like this roll off your back. But, but maybe just this once you ought to lose your patience and show that little cheeky monkey who's boss. Monkey? Little Humbert is a mouse. You kids ought to work that out between you. Uh, I'll just watch. Oh, <laughs> river pirates. How droll. <laughs> Humbert. Jerry came to see me and we talked about you. Who? What? The stupid weasel with a hat went and sneaked to you? No matter what he said, it's not true. He's a liar. Liar, I say. Really? But his brochure looks very promising. It even says that it's only a few steps to fame and a huge audience. Wait, what? Fame? What exactly does that thing say? It says that the famous Maxim Mousimov is currently in Mousewood to teach only one selected, gifted apprentice to play the most difficult to learn instrument in the world. Only one? It says here that the apprentice must be especially talented. Well, I am talented and smart. I'm smart and talented. You see? Jerry was right. Humbert, you little hooligan, you're exactly the right mouse for this. <laughs> of course! <laughs> I'm going to be a rock star. You can pass, you weird weasel. I haven't got time for you now. The next time you see me, it will be on the cover of an album or on stage somewhere, if you can afford the tickets, that is. Right, Anya? Of course, you little rascal. Well done, Jerry. You've got the makings of a true tree walker. Now we can float on down the brook.
Thank you very much, my young friend. That was a really excellent start to my great adventure, and it started here by the humble cold water brook. Now I'm off to the big river, and then out to the open sea. But what about all the crows hanging around there? Oh, you're right. I'll need to be on my guard. If all else fails, I'll simply blow some of my exotic Indian pepper right into the crow's beak. Pepper? Yes. Go ahead and take some by way of thanks. Indian pepper serves many purposes. You can even season your food with it. You don't say. Still no luck with your bite? <laughs> to tell you the truth, I think it's even worse. It's really cold here. I could really use your fire spell right now. Good luck, Plato. See you later. Thanks. Oh, what a nuisance. And I was going to go out with Anya tonight. drifting away. Well then, see you soon. Don't forget me and watch out for the waterfall. What? Waterfall? Ah! That was a close one. Oh man. Phew. Hey, this must be the wood dwarf side. This had better be worth all the trouble. 